Hey guys, it's Julia and welcome back to my channel. And for today's video, I wanted to do the spooky book tag. I haven't done a book tag in like a year maybe. I don't I don't even know. But I have a like a playlist full of them that you could check out if you want. Uh, <laughs> I've done a lot of them over the years, but it's just a fun way to get like little prompts and then give recommendations. And like I thought it was perfect for the time of year, obviously. But yes, uh, this was created by Bookables. Nobody tagged me. I just thought I'd do it. The first question is Corn Maze. What is a book that had you confused or lost from the beginning? So for this one, I altered some of these questions because <laughs> I had some trouble finding books for some of them. But the book Resurrection Girls, this was a thriller YA release that came out in 2019. I got an e-arc for it, but it wasn't necessarily that it was confusing. It didn't pique my interest and then also it didn't grab you. It wasn't engaging in my opinion. Like that's why I DNF'd it, but I thought I'd bring it up because like I was lost in the sense that like I, I gave up on it. <laughs> I DNF'd it. But yeah, that, that book I know a few people read and liked, but I think the average rating still isn't great. I don't know. Next up here we have Haunted House, a book with a super creepy setting. I have Misery here. I love the setting of Misery. Just anything and like an old, like in a cabin in the winter by yourself. Same thing with The Shining. Um, isolated, cold, snow, just darkness in general. That's like, that's the perfect setting for me for a lot of these books. Just like a lonely cabin and, and I'll be, and you'll be good. If you don't know what Misery is about, it's about this author named Paul who uh, has been writing these books uh, and unfortunately he gets into a car accident and the person who finds him happens to be a, a big fan, if you would say, of his work and she kidnaps him and keeps him hostage for a while. So this has a lot of trigger warnings. It's uh, a heavy book, but I, I loved it. I loved it so much. It was so good. Um, and it had that setting that I really liked as well. Next one is Ghost Boyfriend. So this is like your eternal book boyfriend or whatever, or book partner, or whatever. Um, I so honestly don't really have book crushes as much anymore. Like I, I like characters and think they're sweet and all that, but like, I don't, I don't, what's the word? I don't simp for any book character like too, too hard. Anyways, not even, not recently. Uh, so I'll go with the classic, which is a very typical answer, but it's Jace and Will from the Shadowhunter series. They will always be my favorite. They always have a place in my heart. Young Julia loved these books. I still love these books. I need to continue with them. I still have yet to re read uh, Queen of Air and Darkness and Chain of Gold. So uh, yeah, but Jace and Will are like some of my favorite ca characters ever. Jace, Will, Jem, so many of them, so many of them are great characters. Caramel Apple Suckers, what is the best Halloween book? This one, I could not fucking decide the best Halloween book. Cause I'm like, is it gonna be a horror? Is it gonna be a book that's based on Halloween? Is it gonna be a thriller? I don't know, I overthink shit. But I decided to go with something that's perfect for this time of year, but not necessarily like my favorite Halloween book of all time, you know? Uh, but that's Pumpkinheads by Remo Rowell. This is a really cute graphic novel about um, a boy and a girl falling in love and their little romance. And it's it's adorable. It's a pumpkin patch. It all has all the fall vibes. It doesn't have ma as much well, it's in a pumpkin patch, so it does have the Halloween vibes as well, but it's just really cute, really atmospheric. And if you're looking for a graphic novel, I would recommend that one. Vampire and everything, what is your least favorite Halloween trope? So I Googled some tropes and like tried to narrow this down. This is also for movies as well. I took it that way as well. The one of the ones I hate is the gasp. They weren't really dead because you'll see it over and over and over and over and over again. Uh, it'll, it'll, It'll either be like a resurrection or will be they faked their death and they came back or they didn't actually die due to some unknown circumstances and then they try to explain it and then yes that's one of my least favorite another one of my least favorite this is my least favorite but like without this the movies wouldn't happen like without these tropes so many movies wouldn't happen and so many books wouldn't happen but it's running into the dark basement when you're scared i don't know who thought that was a good idea but if it didn't happen in the horror movies, then we wouldn't get the interesting parts on screen. So it makes sense, but it's not the best idea. <laughs> Pumpkin and everything, your favorite Halloween tropes. So for this, I have like the evil clown, uh, the vengeful spirit. Um, I also really like the any type of trope that has a prophecy involved. I also really like the alone in a creepy house or cabin, like I mentioned earlier. Evil incarnate, what is the most evil villain? So for this one, I decided to go with Pennywise. I decided to go with Pennywise from It by Stephen King because uh, Pennywise just has so many layers. Um, it it itself shapeshifts based off your fears. For one of the kids in the book, it happened to be a clown, so that's why you saw Pennywise the clown so much. But no matter like what form he took, or no matter what form um, 
the evil took, it was still scary as shit. So I, yeah, I remember I like one of these tabs in here is for like every death or something. And there's so many of them. Like it's, I, yeah. Next is a Ouija board, a book that messes with things you don't want to be involved in. Uh, for this, I have Dear Wife. Uh, this is a thriller about a woman who is escaping her abusive husband. And we follow another man who his wife went missing. And we also follow the detective on the case trying to figure everything out. And we also follow the women. So we go back before like a lot of POVs, um, but we get a lot of different sides and dynamics of what's going on. And it's, it was a really, really great book. I got it sent to me a little while ago, but it was really good. And I want to talk about that one because something that I don't want to be involved in is, well, I mean, you don't choose to be involved in it, but like domestic violence, I'd rather not have to flee my husband or like go on the run because of my husband. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I couldn't think of anything else. All Hallows Eve, uh, what's a book world that you'd love to be swept up into? I have another just basic answer. The Shadowhunter universe. I've always wanted to be a part of it. Like so many songs as well remind me of these series and I get all of like the um, memories back from the books when I listen to some music and stuff and it's just so nice. I don't know. <laughs> like if you're far behind on this series it's so daunting to catch up so I understand. Like I'm even, I feel daunted to catch up and I only have like a few books to catch up on but they're, they're big books and yeah I don't know. Next is Voodoo Doll, an author that you would like to take control over so they can write what you want type of thing. For this one, I have Gillian Flynn. Um, I absolutely love this author's work. She's written The Grown Up, she's written Gone Girl, All Dark Places, and Sharp Objects. And her work is so good, so dark, always has so many plot twists. I am dying for another release by her. She released this short story like a few years ago and since then I haven't heard anything so I don't know if she's releasing anything. But, like if I had to I would love for her to write another book. <laughs> so next one is Black Cat. What are some like red flags that you look for when starting a book? This one I wasn't sure about either but some things I look for in like a fantasy if I'm reviewing it is like the info dumpy bits that happen in the first book. Um, so just seeing like how many of those there are and like how well I can grasp the information and like that would probably go into my review type of thing. Not really like red flags but I do look for trigger warnings uh, a lot of the time. Just I either write them down on the side or I try to tab them or keep note of them somehow so that I can put them in my reviews so then you guys know um, what the books are going to be about and stuff. Slut shaming is something I look for in YA contemporaries especially the ones with like groups of girls. You're gonna see so much slut shaming so if I see it it's going in my review so that's the types of things that I guess I look for? I don't know. I'd love to hear your answers to this question because I wasn't really sure. <laughs> Next is Witch's Brew. What book had like multiple components but one put together it was all magical and for this I have now entering Adam's Vale by Francesca Zappia. This is a great book. Um, there's these things called fire starters and people start these fires and there's a big mystery and a lot of people believe the main character is an arsonist and there's a lot of it's just in a small creepy town and it's the perfect vibe especially for this time of year and it's so so good. It has multiple things happening in it like it's a contemporary but it's a thriller but it's kind of a bit of a fantasy like a bit of a another fantasy element in there like there's lots of things so altogether it was beautiful. <laughs> I skipped one by accident but full moon um, a character you would turn into on a full moon so I don't know if this was a character I'd want to be or that I'm most similar to or something but I'm gonna go with Audrey Rose from the <laughs> this is escaping from Houdini the third book. The first book is Stalking Drop the Ripper but specifically book two three I still haven't read book four, but book two and three, I fucking love Audrey Rose. Uh, she's a badass, she's a feminist, she works at the morgue. Uh, I, I love her, she's phenomenal. So like if I had to be somebody, I'd wanna be her. The first book takes place in the Victorian era too, so like I would love to be back there um, in that time period. But yes, I would love to be Audrey Rose. And not that I think we're so much alike, but I don't know. I think she's a badass, so. And there you guys have it. That was the spooky book tag. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I haven't done a tag in a while, <laughs> but I hope you guys liked it. Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Thank you guys so much for watching, and I'm going to be tagging a few people. Um, you guys don't have to do it, but like if you feel like it, sure. Uh, Kayla from Literature Reads, Cam from Wolfshot Publishing, Allie from Hardback Quarter, Vanessa, Starzy Rose, and my reading is odd, so. Thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you have a good week and I'll see you guys next Tuesday.